next speaker this morning, the one that came stumbling out here, Kirby Smith, a young adult, he's 28 years old, he hails from Calgary, Alberta, Canada. He lives, he lives his life with passion as well, and Kirby is an example of our teaching that when teens get up in your face and freak you out, stay with them, because they will stay with the teaching, and they will change the world. You know, it's funny, uh, last night, with the fire in my room on, I was staying up and I couldn't sleep. I was like, majorly freaking out. Which I try to hide so well in my quiet nature, which I'm not really that like quiet, so people can kind of tell. And I'm sitting here, I'm thinking, I'm like, why am I freaking out? It doesn't make sense to me why I would freak out. Because there is nothing but love here. And you can't, nothing that I say will be wrong in any way because it's all spirit coming out. Period. Yeah. I mean, like, seriously, what am I going to do? I'm going to walk off stage being like, oh, yeah, thanks. I'm going to be their spirit. Let's do what I need to do. <laughs> so, I'm just going to do a little basic, quick, as quick as I can, little backstory. Because I kind of do how I feel RSI, like uh, the teaching is sometimes. A little confusing, don't know where it's going. It's coming here, but then it hits you there. So that's kind of how I talk. I'm kind of way off the wall. And I really want this microphone to move, so I don't have to stand here. So, I first got into the teaching when I was 19. And it's kind of a, an interesting story how I got it. So, I was working in the oil field, and we were sitting there, I was talking to my friends, I was like, I really want to get home because I was, I think we were there like 30 days or something in the bush and it just wasn't cool. <laughs> so this was before I knew the teaching. My friend's like, yeah, so when are you coming home? I'm like, uh, I don't know, a couple days maybe, unless I get in an accident tonight. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm in the back of the, like, it's a little, like, little horse trailer thing with, like, it's, it's gas and stuff is going on in there and I'm taking measurements and readings. And next thing you know, I'm standing there, and as all I see is a big ball of fire coming towards me. So, this happens, I get out, it's the middle of winter in Canada, so you know, when you're burned, if it's minus 40, you're not going to tell that you're burned. So our faces are white, we're like, oh yeah, it's, it's, it's okay, it's cool, I feel alright, I feel okay, you know, this is, this is alright. So, we go back inside where it's a little warmer and you can start to feel the pain. So we're like, well, maybe we should call an ambulance or something to get us out here, we're kind of hitting behind. So, long story short, we didn't call an ambulance, we drove in because we figured they wouldn't be able to find us anyways, because we're right in the middle of nowhere. Get to the hospital, and usually when you go to the hospital and you got something that happened to you, the nurses are always reassuring you, and they're doing this and they're doing that. Well, I wasn't getting that. <laughs> they're just sitting there doing their IVs, running, oh, we can't put it there, so we gotta put it, no, it's burned there too, so we gotta put it here. I'm like, what? Like, are you kidding me? So, I was the one telling the jokes to the nurses, and as soon as that morphine kicked in, it was like, fuck <laughs> So I'm sitting there, and I had this minister at my church, I didn't really go to the church, and no one was trying to get me to go, and I'm like, no, I'm not really into religion, I don't like that, I don't, it, it, no. It wasn't my cup of tea then. So, my mom phones uh, Reverend Leslie Scott Harold, as some of you might know. Yeah. Um, he was like my grandfather, was beautiful. So, she phones me at 2 in the morning, but she found out that I was going to the hospital. And she's like, yeah, can you treat for me? He's like, well, you know what, I'll do you one better. Come pick me up. So, when I was in the hospital, when they arrived, the nurse, the doctors and stuff were talking about skin grafts. I had second and third degree burns on my face and hands. So, it wasn't pretty. I couldn't see because my face was like swollen. I looked like a, some kind of fruit that just was... <laughs> <laughs> so... The whole time I was in emergency, he treated for me. He sat in the corner, he didn't talk to me, I didn't even, I, well, I couldn't see him, he was infected. So he treated for me. And within four days, I was out of the hospital. So that was when I was like, you know what, maybe I'll just give it a little chance. <laughs> Let's go on a little blind faith here. <laughs> so then fast forward a little further, 
and I was going through it and I was kind of feeling it and not, and then someone brings up cause and effect. I'm like, well, okay, what's cause and effect? And they're like, well, pretty much. I'm totally stopped now, but that's okay. <laughs> so, basically, you get in an accident, somehow, bad effect, this is just an example that probably doesn't even work, but I'm going to use it anyways, because I'm up here, not you guys. <laughs> <laughs> so, you can it, somehow you cause it. It's like, well, seriously, how, and I'm the argumentative type, right? So I'm like, I can't take that. No, somebody hit me, and it's their fault. It's like, well, did you turn on a red light? Maybe. <laughs> but, and, like, you know, it's one of those things where it just, it's, it's, when, it, when I was back there, thinking about cause and effect, back then, I hated it. I did, I really did. I don't, I don't know if anybody else feels me on that one. Because the thing about it is, you think about cause and effect, and it leads you to where you are, and who you are. And no matter what, no matter what, cause and effect takes away every excuse you think you could possibly come up with. You're like, oh, but I did, no. What did you do? You did this, and this came. It's like, well, how does that even work? That doesn't make sense to me. Until you realize that... What do you realize? <laughs> Let's go back a little bit. Let's go back. <laughs> so, here, I'm trying to do a little cause and effect in my own life, because I promised last year, last year, well, it was this year, but last young adult, I made a commitment that I would share one new thing with people that I didn't really know, or even people that I know, because I'm so horrible at not sharing. So, I'm just going to tell a little story about, uh, this one's actually pretty big for me, because I kept this a secret for a long time, and only certain few knew. I went through this year where I was a full-blown alcoholic. Like, I drink in the morning, drink in the afternoon, drink at night, I didn't do it all over again. I still go to work. Which is the weird part, because I don't know how I even functioned in that year because I didn't think anything and that was the only year that I missed young adult. In mm. nine years, I think, just about ten years. So that was pretty powerful to me because it is all I, it was I was hurting myself so much that I, it was because of something else that happened, but I thought for some reason, by me doing this, I was getting back at them. I was like, no, no, I went and got beat up tonight because I was drunk and now they're gonna feel it. <laughs> Big mistake. Because I felt that in the morning and every morning subsequently there. So, well, I thought someone was shushing me. <laughs> I totally lost every train of thought that I had. Drinking, right. <laughs> What I've learned in my times is, no matter what happens, what I do, I make choices in my own life to get me where I am. And one of the best choices that I ever made was standing up at Young Adult and nominating myself for director and getting it. Yes!